us. A clarion call for you to join the assembly. It is where you decide how to be served. My people, wake up and join the assembly on 92.5 Enugu's Dream FM every Monday and Friday by 5 p.m. Together, we can hold our government institutions accountable and demand for our rights. They approved. Say I. Those against the need, I serve. A clarion call for you to join the assembly. Good evening and thank you for joining the premiere edition of The Assembly on 92.5 Enugu's Dream FM. The Assembly is all about governance, accountability and human rights. It is a platform that aims to bridge the gap between the government institutions and the people. In this Assembly, you speak and we amplify your voice. I am your speaker. Isn't it? Anyway, today is the 21st of December 2020. We are counting down to Christmas and time in the studio is 5.06 p.m. Our focus is on how to care for the destitute and vulnerable in our society. It is a season of sharing, of course, and we should not leave that particular uh, special people actually out of our plans in the society. I am aware that there is an institution of government responsible for the destitute and vulnerable here in Enugu State, which is the Ministry of Gender Affairs and Social Development. In fact, one of their services includes providing a temporary shelter for destitute, vagrants, and mentally challenged persons. I recall that on the 31st of May 2020, which was a Sunday, I personally witnessed the intervention of Gender Affairs Ministry on the case of a mentally and stable young woman who gave birth on the street of Enugu. However, there is a recent story that is still begging for answers from the Ministry of Gender Affairs and Social Development. Today makes it exactly a month she was found on the street of Enugu. Listen to her. One, two, three, four. What's your name? You. Yeah, I see your name. One, two, three. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. What is the name of your daddy? Okay. What did you eat today? Rice. Rice. What again? Potato. Potato. Wow. Yeah, clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Uh, did you go to church today? Yes. Eh, yeah. did you see pastor? Eh, yeah. did you see pastor? Yeah. Did pastor. you? You saw pastor. Did you dance? No. Why? <laughs> Mom, pastor. Yeah. Well, that was the voice of miracle, so she claims. Though mentally unstable, she is resilient in finding a meaning to life. Who found miracle on the streets of Enugu? Listen to that. My name is Ruth. I met Miracle on I met Miracle on Saturday, twenty first of November, twenty twenty, on my way to work around Uduma. That's between the hours of ten thirty to yeah, around ten thirty. I met her. She was actually passing. I was heading for work, and she was like, "Auntie." Please, I want to drink water. But I wasn't hearing what she was saying. So I turned again and I looked at her. And I asked her, what did you say? She said she wants water. So I was like, what would a young girl like this, a small girl like this, be doing on the street with her school bag and, you know, tattered? And so I was really concerned. So because of the uh, nearby shops around there, I told the girl to get water for her. So she went inside. When she came out, I was not asking her, have you seen this girl before? She said no, that they have been asking her when they saw her to where she came from. But she wasn't saying anything. So some people gave her, you know, full stuff. So I also saw that 
her legs were bleeding and she wasn't putting on any footwear. So I told the woman there to give me, help me with um, slippers. So she now gave me um, the slippers and gave me hanky. I bought hanky too. But since she saw that I was, it's because of the girl that passed in front of our shop. So she said I should not bother paying for the hanky. I should just give her money for the slipper. So that was how I was now asking questions and they said they don't know, nobody knows. So even the girl had to go inside, get water, she washed her head, washed her legs and wore the slippers. So I noticed that my time, I need to just go off. So I told her to just sit down one place and eat. So I left, thinking that maybe when I come back, she must have gone somewhere else. So when I was passing again, because that's the same route, I normally come and go. So when I was passing, I saw her, and she now smiled. And she was in front of one tailor's um, shop. So when she now smiled, like she recognized me or something. So I wanted to move, but I just stopped. I asked the woman whether she knows her. The woman said no, that she has been asked. She was just playing. I was not discussing with the woman what can be done now. What do you think can be done? She said she doesn't know. Another woman that was passing came too, and we just started talking about her and everything. So I said, okay, I think we should just take her to this psychiatric um, hospital at New Heaven to get in there. They said I should sit, that the chief is not around, but the nurse is there. Like, honey, we don't used to do this thing again. No, we can't. We're not taking people again. I was like, no problem. Let me just hear from the chief. So I was just patiently waiting, sitting down there until he came. So I narrated everything that happened, how I saw the girl and if they can do anything. So I decided to bring her here. But I don't know. Maybe they didn't believe me. Because the way they were looking at me and everything. So at the end of the day, he said that I can't keep the girl there. That I'll have to go back with her, wherever I brought her from. So they even had to call some security people to just make sure that when I'm going, that I don't leave her behind. I just noticed everybody watching me and all that. I felt bad. I was like, ah, why did I even bother even bringing her here? I thought help would have come from this place. But looking at the situation of things and how everybody was even treating me that brought her there was terrible. It was bad for me. So I didn't know what else to do. I now thought of who would I call that would advise me, who would talk to me now. You know, I called my sister, but she didn't really have any solution to it. She was like, ah, what, what are you doing? What's going on? So I called uh, Miss Izini. She didn't pick. So she sent a text that... The, I should text her back that she can't take calls. So that was when I now called Mr. Jonathan so to know what he can say. He now said I should just wait for him, that he will be there. So a few minutes later, he arrived with the wife, Mrs. Udu. Well, it has not been an easy one because we don't really know her. So we're just trying to, everybody has been trying to, you know, master her characters at times in fact the first day she came to the house she slept throughout she didn't even move a because we almost awake watching her so she slept till like 11 a.m the next day so that was when she woke up and we were all looking at her watching her gave her food she had her bath and you know got dressed you know a lot of things we have been the wounds in her leg. We've been trying to clean her up everywhere. She was so unkept. So we've been had to shave and, you know, a lot of things. And, of course, she has stones in her ears, you know, those things. And Mr. Jonathan, everybody that we took her to the hospital, she went for tests. Sometimes she can be, you know stubborn and you know so many things but by god's grace we have been coping we have been god has been giving us strength to you know look after her a clarion call for you to join the assembly Making entrance into the assembly is the couple who took Miracle by the hands and ensured that she is taken away from possible harms on the street of the Inugu. Take a listen. My name is Jonathan Udu. And Ruth called me that afternoon. That was on the 21st of November 2020. And um, 
and telling me that she doesn't know what has happened, what she got herself into. And I asked what is happening. She now explained that she found a little girl along Uduma Street. And so I haven't um, questioned her. The girl was not uh, really communicating, but she couldn't just go past her. I think she had a heart of compassion for her. She couldn't just go past the little girl. And so she decided to do what's right, take the little girl to the psychiatric hospital at New Haven, dear. So it was from when she was there, she called me. So when she called me, I had to talk to my wife, and I told her that we are coming. So while on our way down, I just called a brother, Chooks. So he, he met us there. So my wife and I went there. So by the time we reached there, we saw Ruth, I questioned her. The girl herself is not of a fully sound mind. She wasn't of a fully sound mind. She had a kind of a distorted uh, speech. She wasn't uh, her tongue. So she can't really communicate very well. So uh, I believe that's where she thought it was, to just take her to a psychiatric, but a psychiatric hospital. said they cannot receive her, that they used to, it used to be their policy, that they even go from street to street picking people who are destitute and um, not in fully in their right minds. Since they couldn't take the girl, we were just there confused, trying to find a way out for this little girl. We had to just uh, rack our brains and pray. And um, we wanted to know what the implications would be legally, socially, and all of all that. How do we go from here? We need that direction. So um, every person we met or talked to, the whole indication was that go and drop this girl where you picked her from. And this is a little girl. How can you just go? I do not know what she will be exposed to. And this girl is just young. She's about 12, 13. And um, um, I will, we try to ask her where she's from. She does not know where she's from. She doesn't really know her name. But the first time I met her, she said her name was Miracle. And sometimes you ask her, she said her name is Chioma. And she's not even sure about her own name too. But she understands things. Anything you are saying, she understands. But where she's coming from or the past, she really does not understand. So we decided that night to take her straight to the police station. And this was around, um, uh, uh, taking her to the police station was around um, 6, 6 in the evening. So when we took her to New Haven Police Station, uh, New Haven Police Station said, well, they have closed. It was on a Saturday. I mean, why they don't receive people like this? They only receive criminals, the police officer there said. So that same night, we had to take the girl down to Uduma Street, where she was picked up, and talk to some people that saw her earlier in the morning, and they said they didn't know anything about the girl. Then from there, uh, we took her down to uh, the FSP, just near the uh, IMT police station there. So uh, since they could not receive that girl then, uh, then uh, the gateman was saying that the way they can keep her is the rehabilitation um, place at MNN. So we can't start driving and say they will need police there. So we can't start driving. So we went back and it was then because we have gone round and round and nothing, every indication was like go and drop her back. Just drop her in the streets and go. But we cannot. We just have to take responsibility for humanity's sake. So my wife just said that please let's just take her home. She they said till Monday. Let us take her home. So we took her home and um, till Monday. So by the time we go to Monday, say we need to go to, to gender affairs. That's the official body that receive uh, or to which is their own affair. So we want to just say, let's just hand it over to But knowing fully well that gender affairs will not just receive us, so we had to go back to the police station. So when we explained to the police, the police were even, they, they treated the whole case with compassion even. So the DPO even assigned an IPO to go with us to the Ministry of Gender Affairs at Wayek where the MOT, Ministry of Transport, is, and uh, to go with us, with even the police extra. By the time we got there, for them to even receive the police extract, they refused. We said, let us write a name that we want to see the commissioner. And by the time the uh, PA to the commissioner, okay, the PA refusing us. Okay, now, even if we cannot see the commissioner, receive 
the extract just sign receive what we brought this is a child we explain to them. This is the child we found and all of all that but the pa said no that they can't receive her that their facilities are full and they can't receive and that the girl is not even sane we waited there for more than about three hours till they closed the commissioner came I told the commissioner that we want to see you, madam. She was just walking away. She said she can't see you. The woman walked straight to the car and slammed her car and walked away. The next day, we repeated the same visit. Stayed there for about three hours. And the PA refused. Okay, even if you will not do anything, give us an advice. Even if you say your facility is full, tell us, advise us properly. You are a mother. You know, it's so hurting and touching that how can... A parastata like this be doing this i went back home we're pondering on this i said maybe the woman will regret her actions the anna said let us go the next day the third day again maybe she will be sleeping and say ah the way she treated these people maybe we decide to give her an excuse maybe she was being overloaded with work maybe that's not how she but what we went there the third day nothing again we went back to the police so we've been talking with the police and we didn't know what to do so i think it was on thursday somebody now said we can go to red cross and mother of christ so we prepared again and meanwhile our week had been so hectic because taking care of this guy stalled our week stalled our job and made it just it just reshuffled our lives we decided to take the girl to red cross but red cross said they only take from zero to two years so from red cross we went down to mother of christ by the time we got to mother of christ we were told mother of christ received from zero to two months so there was no way we can go so that's how we started taking care of this girl until we got contact with a foundation that is um, at um, Anambra State. So all this while we've been going to the police, the police have been like encouraging us even. And the DPO uh, and the IPO in charge and all of that, they've been encouraging, at least with good words. So we got in contact with a foundation at Uga, but the PA to the founder that we talked with said that they were just being careful because they don't want any problem so that nobody come and say you kidnap somebody or something like that so he said that please if we can just get the police extract that will cover the child then there from there they cannot take it up so we went back and told the police so the police then said we should uh, put it in writing and all of that for which we did and when we did the dpo told us that since it's going past her jurisdiction that's still new haven police station she's going to minute it to the state cid and they will take it for up from there and so that's where we are at now a clarion call for you to join the assembly You are listening to The Assembly on 92.5 Inugu's Dream FM. Sorry we had to take that break. And uh, time in the studio is 5.29 p.m. We have been talking about how to take care of the destitute and the vulnerable. You've listened to the testimonials from... Uh, our main person, Miracle, who said her name is Miracle. She's a destitute, still looking for a way to be accommodated by the society. You heard the testimony of the lady, the young lady who picked her up, Ruth, uh, from the street of Enugu, Uduma, precisely. And then followed up by the couple, uh, Mr. Jonathan, who also lent a ha helping hand uh, to ensure that the girl is taking off the street. And of course, he didn't do that alone. The wife as well had her role to play and is still playing that role till date. Today makes it exactly one month since Miracle has been with them. My name is Ikechi. It's been challenging, just like my husband said. For a child who is not fully, completely in a good mental state, you know, we have to guide her in little basic things like having her bath, wear her clothes, and um, even using the toilet. You have to, you know, always assist her. At times you can't leave her by herself because you don't know what she might do. 
so it has really been a challenge she's not just a little child that can handle his or herself she kind of need, has some special needs so as a family it's really been challenging it's been tough at times you have to flog her if she gets it right today tomorrow she might not get it right a lot of shouting a lot of correcting praying and all that but we still thank god because in a space of one month we have seen a very huge improvement like i can remember the first week she came her concentration level is so low she can't even watch a television program but now she can sit down she can watch you know she can she can do little things things she could not do before but that has not been without um My coaching name is deborah and uh, i'm junior sister to ruth the one that found the girl um, everybody has said it it has not been easy but god has seen us true because uh, you have to always be there. You can't leave her to herself. So anytime you leave her to herself, she spoils things. Like, it's not that she's violent, but because she's not of a very sound mind, that uh, ability not to stay one place. So she scatters things and all of that. So you have to always be there, having to stop work and everything to look after her. It has not been so easy. God has been there for us. We've been praying a lot and encouraging her. And the fact that you're seeing changes is so beautiful. The fact that, in fact, she's not like a sister. It hasn't been easy, but it has, it's what it because We are seeing the improvement and everything. Clarion call for you to join the assembly. Well, that's the story of Miracle. And of course, we reached out to the Ministry of Gender Affairs, precisely the Commissioner for uh, Gender Affairs and Social Development, Princess Peace in Nati. But till now, no response. We hope to get a response. And anytime they are ready, we are here in the assembly to give them the opportunity to respond. How should we take care of the destitute and vulnerable in our society? Join the assembly and let your voice be heard on the social media platforms. The Facebook page is 925DreamFM. The Twitter handle at Dream925FM. You can use the WhatsApp line 902 20925 and the phone lines will be opened shortly 0902 Heal the World by Pato Rankin.
Assembly. Healing the world is your responsibility and mine. You heard a song from Pato Rankin, Heal the World, here at 92.5 in Ugo's Dream FM, The Assembly. Time in the studio is 5.37 p.m. And we have been talking about how to take care of the destitute and vulnerable. Now we're going to be talking to a development expert. She is very passionate about uh ensuring that children are not trafficked now she kicks against child abuse and child trafficking and uh, she is also passionate about ensuring that children are given their place in the society now when we talk about the vulnerable usually uh Eyes roll towards women and children and ensuring that they are treated properly and accommodated well in the society. We're going to talk to her shortly, but before then, remember, you can join the conversation. Tell us, how should we take care of the destitute and vulnerable? You listened to that story of Miracle earlier. So call the number 0902-002925 or join us on the Facebook page 925DreamFM, the Twitter handle at Dream925FM. My name is Aizin. So, here on the Facebook page, 925 Dream FM, I saw a comment uh, here from Oka Kingsley Okukwe who said, We can help them by making them to be self employed, learning work, starting up businesses, training them in different skills, and bringing them nearer to the government. Clothes, food items can be offered to them if possible. We have a caller. Good evening. 0902002925. You can join the assembly. Let your voice be heard. How should we take care of the destitute and the vulnerable in the society? Send us your messages to the WhatsApp line as well. 0902002925 or on the Facebook page 925 Dream FM. The Twitter handle is at Dream925 FM. Hello, good Hello. evening. Thank you for joining the assembly. What's your name? My name is Oguja Emmanuel. Emmanuel, where are you calling from? From uh, uh, from uh, uh, Suka. Emmanuel representing on Suka. Go ahead. All right, we lost that call. Emmanuel, if you can call back, that would be great then. So on the Facebook page, it's 925 Dream FM. The Twitter handle is at Dream925FM. Then the WhatsApp line is open 0902002925. Good evening. Hello? Yes, who has joined the assembly? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Gabriel. Where well, I'm listening to your program is when I'm in Omisha. All right, Gabriel. I'm a, I'm, I'm driving. I'm driving. I don't want my Ah, uh, ah, uh, you're I'm driving. We want you to be safe for Gabriel. Biko, yeah. park well. Okay. I just wanted to thank uh, that woman that took care of that baby. All right. Okay, then. Thank you very much, Gabriel. You need to concentrate on your driving. Now we have Mrs. Ijoman Naji here on the line. Good evening and welcome to the assembly. Yeah, good evening. It's good to have you here. Now, uh, I, know, you. I know you're aware of the story we're looking at, considering the topic, how to take care of the destitute and vulnerable. I'm going to be asking you of your opinion from the angle of the non-governmental organizations, the NGOs. What do you think can be done? Is it possible to have a partnership between the government and the NGOs to ensure that the destitute and vulnerable are well taken care of? Yeah, uh, it is very, very possible. The relationship of the government and the NGO is uh, complementary, very complementary. But it depends on uh, some of the people representing the government. At times, the things that the NGOs have come to take over their work, rather than see them as partners in progress to see them as people coming to help us improve in what we are doing so it's very very uh, wherever you see this relationship in good faith it yields more environmental friendly accommodating results for everybody 
and human rights are respected whenever such happens. And the school of why the organization is there will be met. That is the essence. Hmm. In taking care of the vulnerable, there are government organizations that are saddled with the responsibility of taking care of the vulnerable in each state and in the federation. But they cannot do it alone. We have seen the debilitated condition of the rehabilitation home we have in MNA. And we see what is going on in ordinary homes we have in FSP and the one in one. If they are in collaboration with non-governmental organizations, and government is supporting non-governmental organizations to sustain their shelters and have their shelters, most people that are being rejected in the government institutions would have been taken by the non-governmental organization and of course be taking good, very good care so the relationship is complementary <laughs> yes. it is something that every person around us needs to be running up, up, up for to make sure that there is this relationship that will exist and will continue existing the betterment of our children and the general public because they need non governmental organizations that are actually on ground, hmm. non governmental organizations that are working. I give you an example. Professor Joy A. Z. Loyo is one of the uh, uh, civil rights activists in this state and other states around. And because of the work she has done on sexual gender based violence, you see that whenever you are abused and you go to work home, they will take care of you. The uh, health part, you to hospital where you go to take care of yourself. The other part, they take care of that. Then the institutional part, I don't know whether they are, are you still working in MN, you know. But they will make you feel good and they will even send you to where you will get psychological support. Uh, Mrs. Sinaji. Okay. Now, th there seems to be a gap because uh, with the story of Miracle, I followed that story and I'm still following it. It seems like we don't have enough NGOs that provide shelter for people of her age between 12, 13. Most of the, you know, um, charity homes or, or NGOs that we, we saw and met were saying they were taking or they usually take uh, children, whether zero to two months or one, two years, they were not paying attention to that age group. What do you think can that be done is, to breach that gap? Yes, if, if, if the government has said that that is that, what they would have done is to speak to so the non-governmental organizations that can start seeking children that are above five years. You understand? And hmm. support them. And give them accommodation. We have a lot of government buildings, you know, that are wasted. Give them accommodation support such NGOs, and they will start taking care of the age gap you people have left. Somebody that is 12 years is still a child in Nigeria. When you're 18, you're still a child in Nigeria until after 18. So I don't know why Miracle will suffer this way. And then where the mother ministry that is supposed to take care of Miracle is not taking care of her. I do not know whether Miracle has such gender affairs because gender affairs has all it takes to take care of miracles. She has been there, there but she was turned down by the Ministry of Gender Affairs and Social Development. She was not received with the excuse that the facility is full. So all their facilities are full. The one in FSP is full. The one in, uh, one in Health Center is full. If their facilities are full, that is the more reason why they should themselves and tell the government that there is need for 
there to support non-governmental organizations in the state who have shelter or who want to have shelter for them to have shelters that they can return when they have overflow. That is very important. This is programming. These are emerging issues that the government you have to look into. And otherwise, I know that there are uh, 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 an organization somewhere in Ababa, you know, that takes care of children who are in need, being, you know, autistic children and the rest. And then such organizations can be referred to, you know, such organizations can be referred to so that they will be able to obtain miracles and still take care of us. All right. Let's not hide behind is why there is gender affairs. Gender affairs is not just there. It's there for children, old people and women. That is the essence of gender affairs. If they have failed and they have sent sides out, rejecting this side, it is a no-no. It is a no-no. And I'm too sure probably their commissioner doesn't know about this. Their commissioner does not know about this. And I don't want people to go and let the commissioner know about it. Well, because if the commissioner knows about it, something will be done. We were but at the office. So we were at the office of the commissioner three times, and we saw her two times. She saw us, but um, unfortunately, didn't give us the attention we sought. Uh, the days that we met her, and she, uh, I called her. Uh, I sent her a message, and we are yet to get a response from her. Did you write on this? To the commissioner. We went with a letter, because an extract from the police. We went with a letter and it was not acknowledged. There may be so many people wanting to see her. You understand? And what he writes in Jesus I cannot even suffice. If you have written, setting the history of this girl, and even where you are waiting for her in the waiting room, and send that thing in, I bet you, there's no way that side will go out again, except going to either FSP or going to one. All right. I am not there, and but that's what I bet you. Okay. If that woman, the commissioner, to stay out to talk in the midnight at about 2 a.m., expecting these girls that are coming from uh, Ibado, that went there for, they, they took them there, that they are going to work in a supermarket, but at the end of the day, it was prostitution. And they were referred to us. If that woman should leave the comfort of her home to make sure that those children came into this state in good health and supported them and followed them up, I don't think that if she hears about miracle, she will leave her like that. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Mrs. Ijoma Naj. It's been a pleasure having you You're here on the welcome. assembly. She's a development expert. She's very passionate about uh, children and, of course, works towards ensuring that child trafficking and child abuse is brought to uh, a minimum uh, you know, state in Nigeria. Well, here in the assembly, we had talked to the the uh, Office of the Gender Affairs and Social Development. We went there with official documents, especially an extract from the police, but we were not paid attention to. We saw her. We saw the Commissioner for Gender Affairs, Princess Peace Naji. We actually saw her. We talked to her, but she didn't give an audience, just like you heard the um, one of the testimonials from Mr. Jonathan, that was true because I was there personally to witness that. But of course, uh, we are here to uh, hear from the Gender Affairs Ministry and we're going to give the opportunity for them to actually talk to us on that matter. 0902002925 or on the Facebook page, join the Assembly 925 Dream FM. Mishak Nathans, good evening. Uh, he said, we can help the destitute and the vulnerable by organizing in an NGO where the less privileged and the vulnerable will be taken proper care of. The NGO should be able to provide a basic human wants, exa example, food, shelter, clothing. All right. Thank you, Mishak from Enugu. Well, you can keep your
conversations going to the social media platforms, the WhatsApp line, we have John from Onita who said the first step, I think the first step is to be kind to the downtrodden and the underprivileged, seeing them as part of us, uh, that is as part of the society, he said. Thank you, John, for joining the assembly. Hello, good evening. Ah. Yes, good evening. What's your name, sir? Where are you calling from? Good evening. My name is Chooks. I'm calling, calling from Water. Chooks, go ahead. I had this, the, all the story about this uh, miracle. First of all, I thank the people, these people who have been taking care of their very costly. Then the government, the, what, what you are saying, what is the state government supposed to have the facility uh, where they will be taking care of such uh, people? Uh, that need need care. Another one, the church. All these churches we are ha we are having today. Where, where, what are they preaching about? This is what that is their work. This is where they will put, will put their money into. Not building this category, but they, this is the, exactly God's work they should be supposed to take care of. And this is my suggestion. All right. Thank you very much for joining the assembly and for lending your voice to the matter. Okay, uh, before we round off on the assembly today, we're going to adjourn and do a follow-up of the story. It's not over. We just got started on the assembly. Now, if you have any reports you'd like to make to the assembly, uh, something that is bothering you, something you think the government needs to do right, or you want to um, straighten out some processes that you're having challenges with, you can talk to us. Send us a message, a WhatsApp message to the number 090-33277835. I'll mention it again. Send a WhatsApp message to the number 090-33277835. You can also text the number if you don't have data to send us a message. But of course, we encourage you to use WhatsApp in case you need to give us uh, pictorial evidences or video evidences. And of course, we will investigate as the assembly and swoop in on the matter. That's what we do. Thank you for joining the assembly today. And I want to also leave you with this quote from Louis Alberto Oria. When your politics no longer have room for empathy, Things spin into an immoral chaos. Not only the desperate suffer, who gets hurt and who stays safe becomes hard to predict. That's it on today's edition of The Assembly. Remember to keep your comments going to the social media platforms. The Facebook page is 925DreamFM, the Twitter handle at Dream925FM. I want to say a big thank you to my production crew led by Okio Dogu, the head of programs, Jude Thomas Dawan, my producer, Emmanuel Anyasa OBJ, and my production, capable production assistant, Lutano Kereke. My name is Aizen Naningwe. The Assembly is hereby adjourned till Friday, 5 p.m. Until then,